while everyone else is uh, putting up early reviews for Ghostbusters. Fuck that. Nah. We're seeing the we're seeing the infiltrator, cause fuck yeah. <laughs> Cranston, Leguizamo, mm -hmm. the eighties. Yeah. Cocaine. Uh-huh. I'm in. Yeah. Sold. It's totally sold. I'm actually glad this got a midweek release. I didn't think it was coming out until no. uh Thursday night. Uh, it was it, you know, with a big movie coming out Thursday, mm -hmm. I mean this obviously stands no chance in the box office, I don't think, but Against, it, yeah. it was it was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really good. And I just happened to notice that it was getting a, a preview tonight. Like, uh, I just looked like uh, uh, I was like, is there anything that I uh, that I'm forgetting about or something like that that's still playing? And I clicked on Wednesday, and um, this movie was on there, but had like regular times, like yeah. you know, eleven two, four, whatever. Like, oh, it must be getting previewed on t Tuesday. Sure enough, text you like yesterday. <laughs> Dude, you want to go see Infiltrator tomorrow? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Saw the trailer once and I knew I was in. Yeah, uh-huh. This movie is totally my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> I like how it's like, um... It's like if Walter White was Hank Schrader and it's the <laughs> 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's even a scene where his Leguizamo is kind of his partner in this. There's even a scene where Leguizamo, all disheveled looking, shows up at the back door of Cranston's house <laughs> while Cranston's eating dinner with his family. And it's like, is this some bizarro universe, like, breaking good? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah. John, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, all the times fucking Jesse showed up at Walter's house. <laughs> oh, man. I like how through so much of this movie, Cranston looks like Robert Goulet. He really does. <laughs> really does. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mustache and the fucking the 80s, like, fucking mafia pompadour. And the, the suits. Yes. Fuck yeah. From the trailers, you should know whether or not you're going to like this movie. Yeah, whether it's... Whether it's your kind of thing. It's a... It's a good 80s cop movie. Yeah, yeah. But with the cartel and... Yeah, uh-huh. It's got a good, like, to live and die in L.A. vibe to it. Or like a 80s Michael Mann, kind of. Between some of the synth score they use in it, yeah, a lot of Magic Hour exterior shots, yeah, a lot of the shots and some of the music cues definitely get the the director who I'm really not familiar with on this, Brad something. Oh fucking uh, God. yeah, I didn't recognize off at first glance either when his name popped up at the end but, but you can tell there was some there's definitely some scorsese and a little in i i saw more yeah with some long tracking shots yeah. that are later on in the movie i saw a little a little more like william friedkin and michael mann influence throughout, okay. throughout the movie um but yeah, a lot of like you know, standing in tall buildings on, <laughs> looking out in glass windows over the nighttime Miami skyline. <laughs> Sold. Um, so it's Brian Cranston. He's an FBI agent. In... It's the guy who made Runner Runner. You remember? <laughs> no that? shit. Yeah, it's the guy who made Runner Runner. Remember that piece of shit movie? I remember it, but I wasn't there for that one. That was you and Brian. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, having not seen Runner Runner and everything I know about it and everything from yeah. you guys' point A to point B review, I'm guessing this is the better movie of the two. Much, much better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> much better. <clears throat> I mean, Runner Runner had highlights, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But this was much better. Oh, you can gauge, like the greatness of a Cranston movie on two different levels. Like, one, how hilarious it is yeah. with his, like, more comedic stuff, or how stressful it is. Yes. Yeah. Like, this, this movie, movie gets, gets stressful. This movie gets very stressful. <laughs> Breaking bad levels of stressful. Um, Some part, like, that, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Cranston is, he's not undercover in this scene. Um... He's undercover as a money launderer, 
and one scene he's not and it's his he and his wife's anniversary and they're <laughs> out at dinner oh god in which he's recognized by one of the one of the other guys one of the cartel one of the, guys yeah one of the cartel guys so he instantly has to switch it in gear to be this big shot kind of tough guy in front of his wife who he says like oh is that, that's my secretary it's not our anniversary it's her birthday <laughs> yeah so this poor waiter <laughs> oh, brings man. out this giant cake that says happy anniversary and Cranston just to keep in character has to destroy this waiter <laughs> just just the nightmare uh -huh. as someone who waited tables for <laughs> yeah. so long it's the nightmare and then Cranston grabs his head mm -hmm. and shoves him in the cake just re smashes his face into that cake but considering Cranston oh. was undercover and everything you know that guy got a killer tip <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because, like, he wasn't undercover in that scene. But you go back later when you are, and, like, I maybe you have a little bit of I fucking hope so. <laughs> or at, seriously hope so. Or at least, like, maybe, like, a scene we didn't see where yeah. he just, like, goes into the back and pulls the guy aside. Like, look, all right, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> see, I mean, <laughs> I know that scene took place in, like, Miami in the 80s, but, yeah. like, most of the restaurants I ever worked at, if a customer had grabbed my head and shoved it into a cake, <laughs> there had been a small army of Mexican dudes <laughs> with big knives coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> like, oh, it's Cranston and Loco. <laughs> no, there would have been no dialogue. <laughs> like, fucking hell. Like, no, wouldn't have, the dude wouldn't have made it out the door. <laughs> We do things differently when the guy could, there's a 50% chance he might be Robert Goulet. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> if he could be Goulet. Yeah, then... Mm. <laughs> so, I was also expecting, like, because the follow-up scene to that is Cranston and his wife in the car. There was part of me that was thinking the wife was going to be like, I've never been so turned on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so good <laughs> and it's certainly one of those undercover movies where as the movie goes on he grows to like a lot of these people it grows to like one or, yeah, yeah and it's Benjamin Bratt who, who's how could great. you not who's amazing in this movie and even at the end even there like there's this whole operation they're doing where like the cops and the, the feds are going to swarm in they're going to take all these crooked bankers and cartel members they're going to take them in all at this fake wedding cranston and his fake fiance yeah. are doing and you see this like hurt in his eyes <laughs> when benjamin bratt shows up she's like Ooh. oh man he, he even straight up says like oh, i'm glad you're here but Part of me wishes you didn't take the risk. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I was thinking like they were gonna like uh, also like haul in like Cranston and the fiance like as to the guys protect that... the undercover part. Yeah. They probably in real life might have. Yeah, I was wondering. There, there that was too. Uh, there. <sighs> Listen, overall, this movie was really enjoyable. It's totally enjoyable. It, I highly recommend mm. it. It is flawed. Yeah, it's not perfect. No, it, it, it's, it drags a little in the middle. Uh-huh. Um, I, I felt the, uh, the shoehorned-in sexual tension between Cranston and his fake wife was completely unnecessary. And it was telegraphed pretty... It was, as soon as they yeah, first meet. It was telegraphed. It was unnecessary because uh -huh. you like Cranston more when he's... I mean, he's in, his character is devoted to his wife. Yeah. Like, he doesn't <clears throat> cheat on his wife, but mm. it doesn't add anything to it. It doesn't no. add depth to the character. It's just, just like, I mean, ah, fuck I guess why. the one positive end in that is that it, given that the two of, like, there is sexual tension, but, like, given that they never Act did anything, it. Yeah. it did lead towards his character's, like, faithfulness to his wife. Yeah. But it is... It's not necessary. Like yeah. the movie, 
you could have shaved five minutes out of the movie just by cutting out those long looks that, mm -hmm. that didn't... If it's not going to lead anywhere, and mm -hmm. it's then it's not... It's a movie, for fuck's mm -hmm. sake. If you're doing 12 episodes of a TV show, fine, leave it in, explore mm -hmm. it, but... Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. you, get, you got two hours, get to the fucking point. Yeah. Um, sorry, kids. The car is like, get to the fucking point, yeah. get to the trailers. I don't remember. <laughs> trailers? Oh, I don't fuck. remember what the trailers were. I really were, don't but, either. Um, but oh, there was that Affleck. The oh, that looks good. Yeah. I, that looks better. I'm more so looking forward to that than Jason Bourne. Yeah. Um, but no, with uh, with this movie, like, uh, yeah, you could have shaved. You could have shaved some time off of that, and you could have shaved probably 15, 20 minutes out of different parts. You know, maybe like little yeah. scenes here and there i can't think of other than the sexual tension subplot which yeah you, you could have nixed i can't i'm hard pressed to think of any scenes i could think to lose in their entirety no 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 just little um, bits here and there you mm -hmm. know just a little a little a little quicker to get you to where it's going because halfway through the movie you really absolutely know where it's going yeah um because there, there is a, a scary part in the middle where you think Cranston's really mm -hmm. in danger, and it's that part is resolved far too quickly for there to be a whole lot of tension in the end, other than the emotional tension. Um, are you talking about the when he was in the car and it flipped over, or when he gets the coffin sent the to coffin, him? The coffin, the coffin. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind stuff like that because the movie was good at no, no, when it yeah. was. Well, I'm. It is a really good movie, but what I mean is, like, the movie's really good at when it hits a couple points there in the middle where it might lag a little bit. It does throw something in there to really pretty bring the te yeah. to bring the tension back up, even if it's for uh, a little bit at a time, like the coffin scene, which uh, yeah was pretty scary at first. I was like. Is this just some like melted cherry chocolate thing that somebody sent him and like it? <laughs> like, I don't know why, but in my head, or I'm like, are they, are they fucking with me? And then he opened the coffin, and it quickly like cut to a reaction shot of him. So at first, I was You're like, like what, well, what is it? Yeah, I was like, is there a dick in it? Like, <laughs> I love that. That's where your brain goes. Why is the dick in the box? Like, yeah, like that. I'm like, it could be like a severed dick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Finger or toe could be anything. Sending people dicks. They, you know, yeah. it was big in the Roman Empire. They brought it back in the eighties. Oh, he just yeah, he just got a box from Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> just a big old sack of dicks. <laughs> and send those to Libya. <laughs> oh man. When are they gonna bring that movie back to theaters? If anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be you or the Canadians because oh. it is play like they are showing like a 35 millimeter print of it I got a thing on Twitter about that the other day like yo you coming to see this. I'm like, where's it playing at? Like oh, somewhere in Canada. I'm like fuck me and my non-passport <laughs> when, Well, when's it playing? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know probably I don't know. I, I, I can't remember what well, he said. Well, you know, what we got to do is track down a copy of it, mm. buy it, mm -hmm. and then we can do double screenings with Ed's new copy of fucking uh, of Turkish, Turkish Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like all the messages I've gotten about that. Like, yo, man, did you hear about this? Somebody found Turkish Star Wars. Yeah. Like, it's a dude we know. <laughs> he is a personal friend. <laughs> Ed, you've been keeping this from yeah. me. You been holding out, man. No, nah, I was. Uh, Sarah and I were hanging out with Ed and his wife the other day. Yeah. And like, I, I won't mention it here, but, but uh, like, uh, it, 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 there's some cool shit coming down the pipeline with that. Oh yeah, yeah. He was telling me a little bit about it when I was hanging out up there uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That's badass. Like. Couple sites have picked up articles on that. AV Club did. AV Club, IO9, IO9 did. Uh, Screen Rant did, but right on. Yeah, nice, very cool. <laughs> All I got at home is like a uh, little film reel of the trailer for Jason X <laughs> from when Nick worked at the movie theater. <laughs> He's like, "Yo, man, you want this? Do I? Dude, <laughs> sure." <say> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, save it. What? what, what oh. I don't know where that is. It's in the basement somewhere, I think. Somewhere I got Todd Farmer's email. I bet he'd sign it and mail it back to you. Hell yeah. Fucking Todd Farmer. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the, the dude. Just every time that man writes a movie, I know I'm in. Oh, me too. Fuck yeah. Because you know it's going to be fun. Oh, Drive Angry was fucking great. Jason X. Uh-huh. I mean, fucking, the, even the remake of My Bloody Valentine yeah, was such it. a blast. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of 3D I like. Drive Angry, My Bloody Valentine, yeah. just throwing shit at the camera. <laughs> yeah, those dudes, they were just having fun. Mm -hmm. It's genius. I was glad I saw Drive Angry twice in the theater. Yeah, so, uh... I mean, this is a really good movie that you should go see, so he, I guess even though I have spoiled quite a bit, like, I don't want to talk extensively about it, um, well, that, I, I would recommend seeing it in the theater. It's telegraphed, but it's still riveting enough to keep you, like, mm -hmm. locked in, like... Yeah. I would recommend seeing it in theaters. Uh, if, yeah. if it looks like it's your... If you like 80s Michael Mann, or, yeah. like... If you like stuff like To Live and Die in L.A. and things yeah. like that. No, it's it's it's... It's definitely worth seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go go check it out. You'll know right away from the trailer whether or not whether or not you'll like the movie. And Leguizamo's a fucking blast in it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I guess that was another thing I had about the movie too, is that there's a good forty five minutes to an hour where he's kind of just gone from the movie like well they, they go mean, back to him a little bit but a not, couple times here and there and when it did i was like oh right yeah <laughs> yeah lake was is honestly like I, I remember like when the pest came out i couldn't stand that fucking dude but over the years he has just <laughs> sold himself to me over and over oh again. yeah mm -hmm. like i see lake was and i'm like i'll probably like it i saw him once uh, when we were at New York Comic Con, uh, this was when we were, me, Lindsay, and Todd were going to our autograph table, and, uh, um, th it was one of those cons where it was just like, there were autograph blocks, so yeah. it was like, for an hour, there's like a row of tables, and whoever is a guest, like, you're seated there, so, uh, so they're like, okay, here's your table, and we go there, and we start putting our stuff on there, and then someone comes up and says, oh, we we made a mistake. Uh, you guys' table is down there. This belongs to somebody else. And I'm in my, I'm like, all right, all right. So I start picking up my stuff. And in my head, I'm like, I wonder who it was. And I turn around. And from like me to you, it was like Guizamo. He's like, hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Moving some shit. <laughs> It's still not as good as our Corey Feldman story. Oh, and the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> the slowest elevator yeah. on earth. Corey Feldman. A con girl mm -hmm. and Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. He had his night planned. <laughs> that was a really long, yeah. really quiet elevator ride. Because he was we, nice. Yeah, he was like he said hi when he got on. He mm. said bye when he got off. Uh -huh. But other than that, it was literally like we went up four floors and it took ten minutes. It was the slowest elevator on earth. Yeah, and it was just dead quiet in there. Oh yeah, and oh, <laughs> the I think my favorite elevator ride at a con maybe when me and Ryan were in an elevator with. Doug Bradley and Malcolm McDowell, and they were both giving each other shit. Like, the kind of shit that, like, two old British guys who knew, who've known each other for a long time why, give, like... Yeah. <laughs> why, do the, why do the best con stories always end up in elevators? In an elevator? Fucking Rooker in the elevator? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorites. Oh, when the guy tried to get on the elevator <laughs> yeah. and... Rooker laughed manically as the door closed in his face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man! What one th funny thing about Leguizamo, though, was another thing that came in my head was, he's taller than me. I am so short. <laughs> but it was okay, because I looked over and, like, down the way it was Seth Green, who I'm, t like, twice busy, who's, like, half my size. I'm, like, twice as big as he is. He's such a little man. <laughs> man fuck it, he's got more money than we'll ever have. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, he... Mm -hmm. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, alright, so Thursday is, I think it's just Ghostbusters. Um, so, yeah, Allison and I are going to be at that on on Thursday. So we'll see how that goes. And, how and I'm may... boycotting and then... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't, I, I personally don't think it looks good, but that's mm -hmm. based off what I've seen, mm -hmm. not yeah. anything else. Yeah. 
<laughs> the trailers aren't good. No, the first trailer was awful. Mm -hmm. Second trailer was better. Second trailer was better. I'm, uh, I'll go see this, but I'm still boycotting the remake of Dogfucker. I've got my reasons. <laughs> you, just, you don't fuck with perfection. Nope. You don't do it. You don't do it. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>